Praise the Lord. This is Brother Curtis, and today we're going to be looking in the book of Ephesians and uh, looking at some scriptures that the Apostle Paul teaches. And he wrote this message, he wrote this epistle when he was in prison, and it's about the love of Christ. Actually, the verse we're going to be looking at is right here on my screen. That's the main text I want to look at today. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now notice there's a conditional phrase, that ye might be filled. Okay, well, if you might be filled, you might not be filled. So what would you rather? I would rather be filled with all the fullness of God. But see, Paul says, and to know the love of Christ. So in other words, if we don't know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, then we won't be filled with the fullness of God. Now, I would love to know what this love of Christ is. So let's go look at the book of Ephesians. And again, this is Paul. He was a prisoner of Jesus Christ for the Gentiles. He wrote this epistle from, this, from prison. I have no idea what year it was that he did this. I haven't got that deep into it, but it was probably late in his ministry. He says, If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. This is a mystery that we talked about in previous messages. It was a mystery that Paul received by revelation, as he said, from the Lord. We read this in Galatians chapter 1, verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by revelation. Right here, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. He received this when he went to Arabia. Right in here. Neither when I... Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Paul didn't talk with flesh and blood. He didn't confer with any man. He went, well, immediately he went and preached Christ is the Son of God. He went into the synagogues and preached Christ crucified, but he didn't really understand this gospel message that the Lord gave to him, but it has to do with what he talking about it here in Ephesians, about this mystery, because it was a mystery. It was a mystery, and Paul received it by revelation, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. What is this mystery? Right here in verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. So God's people was the Jews back in the Old Testament, starting with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they were jealous. They, was a, they, didn't, they didn't believe that God was going to have anybody else. Well, but God's plan was always to, to include all of mankind. He wanted everybody to embrace his salvation. And one day, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, and he came really to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And they would have been the head of the nations to preach the gospel to all the world had they have received the Messiah, but they rejected him. And he had to set them aside for a dispensation. And that's why he says, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word. It says dispensation of grace is the dispensation that we're living in from the cross until the rapture. If you believe in dispensations, not everybody does. Right here, the word is right here in the verse number two, the dispensation. It's like four times mentioned in the, in the New Testament, this word dispensation. So I believe in them. I believe that God dispenses truth to certain individuals. He dispensed the truth to Abraham back about 2,000 years after Adam and Eve, approximately. Then he dispensed more truth to Moses when he brought him out, brought his people out of Egypt. He gave him the law. He dispensed more truth to just different individuals. And when it came time for the Apostle Paul, 
he was given some deeper truth, and it had to do with a mystery, which was not made known in the Old Testament. It was concealed. It was the mystery. And this mystery was God was going to eventually make the Gentiles fellow heirs of the same body. See, right now, after the Jews rejected Jesus Christ, there is no, there, the church age, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. Because if a Jew or a Gentile in this dispensation of grace believes the gospel message, they are a new creation in Christ. Where do we see this at? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. New creation, some of the versions would have. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. God reconciles. The moment somebody believes the gospel, he reconciles that person. They're dead in their trespasses and sins, and now they've been regenerated. Their spirit man has been regenerated. They're a new creature, a new creation in Christ. They're neither a Jew, and they're neither a Gentile. They're a brand new creation. Praise the Lord. See, that's what the church age is all about. Now, there's Jews that are unsaved, and there's Gentiles that are unsaved. And then there's the church. That's the three people groups that God has in the earth today. 1 Corinthians 10, 32. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, one group, nor to the Gentiles, second group, nor to the church of God. There is the third group, the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ. How do we know this? Well, if we go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22. He says, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the body of Christ. See, there's a place. Colossians 1.18 is another place where it says it. And he is the head of the body, the church. The body of Christ is the church. Verse 24 who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, the body of Christ, which is the church. See, the body of Christ is the church. The church is the body of Christ. See, we compare scripture. We look at the scripture. That tells us. We can't just make stuff up. Always have to go by the scriptures. So back to here. It's just... This fellowship of the mystery, this revelation of the mystery that God is going to make the Gentiles fellow heirs of the same body. Now, the fellowship of the mystery will save for another time, but uh, we don't have time to talk about that in this message. But this is the Paul's prayer. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Here's the prayer, that he would grant you, he's talking to these believers in Ephesus, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That's our spirit man, in the inner man. That's where the Holy Spirit lives. That's where he abides. See, when we get born again, the Holy Spirit comes, he quickens our spirit. Because it was, at a, it was originally dead to the things of God. Our spirit it could discern things, but it couldn't discern spiritual things. It was dead to the things of God. But once we believe the gospel message, the Holy Spirit makes the life. He quickens our spirit. Ephesians 2, 1, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Even when we were dead in sins, verse 5, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. See, this is the picture of salvation. It's so simple. When we believe the gospel... Faith, faith comes by hearing, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing. We have to hear God's word and believe it, and then things happen. The Holy Spirit will quicken. He quickens us together, which were dead in sins and trespasses, and he makes us alive into God. We go from darkness to light. So, but here's the thing. He wanted, the, Paul's prayer is that he would grant you according to his riches in his, of his glory to be strengthened with might 
that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. That's like four dimensions. Width, length. This is like the mystery, the depth. Width, length, and height is what we do many measurements by, but the depth, that's a, that's a deeper subject. Here's the verse, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the, full, the fullness of God. Remember, we talked about the beginning of this. We may not be filled with the fullness of God. Paul's goal, our goal as believers is to know the love of Christ. What's this word to know mean? It's the epignosis. Let me see what this is. No, gnosko. It's this, it's the same as epignosis for knowledge. This is gnosis, and there's another word, knowledge, which is epignosis. That's deeper knowledge. This is surface knowledge here. Epignosis is a deeper knowledge. Well, to to know is either gnosko, which is a deeper knowing, or we go to verse eighteen, Ephesians one eighteen. We see this other no, to know that you may know what is the hope of his calling. This is edu. Edu. That's the surface knowing. Okay? Just to have general knowledge to know. But this, this know, to know that you may know the love of Christ and to know the love of Christ. See, Paul wants to know him and the power of his resurrection. We see this in Philippians 3. 10, that I may, watch this, that I may know him, gnosko. Don't we want to know Jesus Christ deeper, more intimate? This is intimate knowledge, not intuitive knowledge. That The intuitive knowledge was here in verse 18. It's I do. It's intuitive knowledge. So back to Ephesians 3.18. This is our this is our goal as a believer, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. That's our goal as believers. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the dunamis, that's the power of God, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost power that worketh in us. Is God's power working in you? If it's not, then you're not going to know the fullness of God. You're not going to know the love of Christ. But, yeah, but if it is working in you, then then we will know the love of Christ. See, this has nothing to do with getting to heaven, going to hell or going to heaven. It all has to do with knowing Jesus Christ in a deeper way and one day qualifying to be firstborn sons. Last verse, unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout the ages. Notice that word ages, world without end. I wonder what that word is. I think it's ages without end. No, nope. you know, ages, Gina, generations, generations without end. Praise the Lord. Well, this is our goal. Those who are listening to this message, we are Paul's prayer for the believer was that he would grant you to be strengthened with might by his spirit, by the Holy Spirit in our spirit, in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith, that we being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length. This is deep stuff. This is like the unsearchable riches of Christ. See, this is so, so deep. The unsearchable riches. Paul talks about the unsearchable riches, but we, don't, we didn't read about it here. But our goal is to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. Lord, help us to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. And we bless your holy name in Jesus' name.